Hey guys, it's John P from GeekBeat. Okay, today we're going to take a look at configuring the Power MIG 180 Dual to actually MIG weld. This is as opposed to the other video we did, which was how to configure it for flux core welding. This time we're going to hook up a gas bottle and we're going to do some proper welding with it. Okay, so without further ado, Let's get started. I know it can be intimidating because there's a lot of pieces and there's a lot of little details, but if you just follow exactly what I'm doing here, you're going to be fine and all set up. You can also refer to the website, head on over to geekbee.tv and do a search for Power MIG. You'll see that the same video we're doing, we've got a full step-by-step -step document with pictures, detail, every little detail. And if you have any questions, just ask me in the notes either on the video or the website and I'll get back to you with uh, some more answers if I miss something. Okay, so that's about it. Let's get this thing going. First thing we're going to do, we're going to open up the door of our machine so we can expose all the interior goodies. And we're going to try and decide how to make, how to make sense of all this. It's not as difficult as it looks. We're going to break it down into steps. So first, Let's worry about this clamp that we got and this heavy duty wire that came with it. Okay, so this clamp is going to be used to put on our material that we're going to weld, but it needs to be attached to here. Why they, didn't, why they don't come with them all assembled, I don't know. But we've got a heavy duty cable and we've got a clamp that has a couple of nuts right here on this post. So we're just going to take the outside nut off of this post, nice and simple. And then you're going to notice there's a little hole in the clamp. We're going to take this wire and we're going to feed it right on through that hole and up here and we're going to set it on the clamp. Now I want you to notice the way I'm actually setting it on the clamp is I'm making sure the terminal part is flat at the top and the wire is underneath. I want this to be nice and smooth here so that it doesn't catch a finger or anything else. It's just, it, it, it'll work either way, but this way is just better. So do it. Uh, okay, we're going to put the little nut back on there and just for just for uh, grins, I'm going to really crank that thing down with a ratchet, make it tight, because we really never need to undo that unless this cable were damaged and hopefully you're not going to have that problem. So we tighten that up. Now, we've got that attached to our cable. We just need the other end attached to the machine. So it is time to feed this right in through the small hole in the front of the machine right down here. Okay, so once that's through, we need to connect it up inside. This is where things get a little tricky. It's different if we were going to do this with for flux core. If we were going to use flux core wire, we would just attach this to the positive terminal, which currently has nothing on it. However, since we're going to be doing MIG welding, we have to change the way the machine came set up from the factory. We have to disconnect both of the wing nuts and we need to swap the little short cable that's already in the machine. We need to put this on the positive post and we're going to have our work clamp connected to the negative post. Don't ask me why, I don't understand the physics involved with it, but I do know that if you want a MIG weld, it's got to be this way, and if you want a flux core, it's got to be the other. So we're just going to connect that up. Okay, the short cable on, on the positive terminal, and our work clamp on the negative. We might want to pull this through and just make sure that it's not coming in too close contact with the other terminal. There, they're nicely routed. Okay, we're all set up. We've got a working clamp. Let's set this somewhere out of the way so that we don't have to worry about that. Now, the next thing we can probably go ahead and focus on is connecting our gun. 
So this is actually considered the gun. It's a little handle, it's got a trigger, uh, and it's connected to a cable with a kind of nozzle thing on the end. We are going to feed this. I'm gonna come around the table here so we can feed it in through our big opening on the front. So first I'm going to uh, unscrew this little uh, knob just to release tension on that thing and the cable comes in and we're going to give it a nice shove. There's a couple little orange uh, rings around the outside of the terminal. We want to make sure they're fully in there and then we're going to tighten this up. Okay, next up we have a little wire that is going to take care of the trigger control and it has a terminal that we're going to plug it into. So just kind of spin that until it goes in there and then there's a little ring around the outside just tighten it up. That's it. That's done. Physical connections are made for our gun, so that's good. Okay, next thing uh, let's do is let's get some wire in the machine. Okay, first of all, the machine comes with this big black thing on this post. Now the reason why this is here, uh, even though our tiny little roll of of uh, wire won't fit on it is because we might want to get a big spool and these will go right on there snap in bingo bango uh, it takes a lot longer to run out of this one but that's not what it came with so let's adjust all we have to do is unscrew the little wing nut right here in the middle and remove this little plastic washery bushing thing and bingo that adapter comes right off so we'll just set that aside for now and what we're going to do is we're going to take our wire and we're going to stick it right on the machine before we do one thing I want to make note of is what size is this welding wire this one we'll see is 0 0.025 that is very important we're going to need that in the next step so we're going to stick this on, even though it's got paper, we're just going to puncture it, uh, making sure that it looks like the wire is coming off the top. It's going to, we're just going to stick this right on there. The wire is feeding up here so that ultimately um, it's going to go in this little tube and uh, that's it. So we'll stick the little bushing on. We will stick on the wing nut and we're going to tighten it enough that it's firm but I can still rotate that freely. It's spring loaded so we want to be able to kind of rotate this. If you tighten it all the way it's not going to move. That would not be good. So just firm and it's all good. Okay, now that that is done, the next step is to try and actually get this wire in through this torch. Okay, so we've got to feed it through this little piece here. This this whole block of pieces actually. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull down this tensioner. This is just here to hold this, this is the upper drive unit. We just want to hold it down with the tensioner. So we're going to open that up and leave it open. This is the upper drive unit and we're going to remove this little block that will expose the guts of the machine to us. Okay. Now we can actually see the lower drive wheel and we can see that this piece has a groove that goes right through here, right through the other end and there's a groove in this little drive wheel. Now that is what the wire will feed through to go down into the cable and this needs to be matched in size to the type of wire we're using. So if you look right here, this says the size range is 0.035 to 0.045. Now that's a problem because we're using 0.025, that's clearly not in that range. So we have to turn to our little bag of accessories and there is another unit that is clearly labeled 
0.025 to 0.035. It's a simple, simple thing to swap these out. I'm literally just going to grab this one and kind of, oops, I gotta, I'm going to loosen up this torch tip. Just loosen that knob and pull this out just a little bit. And now I can just easily fish that one out. And we'll set this one up there. Bingo, bango, that was simple. But if you notice, we also have a situation where this drive wheel says it's 0.03 to 0.045, neither of which is within the range of what we're trying to do here. So we have to go back to our little bag of goodies and we have to get the 0.025 um, drive wheel. I know this is a lot of detail, but I promise you, once you get this set up, it's really much simpler than it looks. So we need to remove this piece so that we can swap out that wheel. Time to introduce a new tool. We're going to use our MIG pliers. These are important for a couple of different reasons, one of which you'll see later, one of which you'll see now. In order to change out that roller, that little wheel, we have to loosen this little post. So I'm just gonna take my pliers and I'm going to gently squeeze it and turn it so I can get it started. Then with my fingers, I'm just gonna unscrew it really gently, remove that, remove this little plastic piece here, and now we can slide that wheel off. Notice it says now we can see it very clearly, 0 0.030, 0 0.045. So we're going to take our 0 0.025 and we're going to stick it on there. Just slides in. Let's see. There we go. Then we'll put this little piece back. We will screw that piece back in. See, it's not hard. There's nothing hard about any of this. It's just a little detail. So uh, if you miss the detail, it can, can kind of mess you up. But if you, if you start trying to use the machine and it's doing funny things, just stop, go back through our checklist and, and see which part did I skip and you'll be fine. Okay, so we're gonna take those two pieces and we'll put them back in our little bag of goodies here so we don't lose them in case we want to switch over to flux core or a different size later. Um, and now this should be all set up ready for us to feed our material through. So let's do that. First thing I need to do is get a hold of this uh, welding wire and do not, for the love of God, let go of this wire. If you do, it is going to start unspooling at an unprecedented rate. It will make you very unhappy. So we're going to hang on to this like we mean it. And we're going to clip the end off because we need this to be really smooth. We're going to take the cable and straighten it a little bit by hand, just kind of we want it to be straight because now that we have all this open, we're going to feed this wire in through this little entry. Watch it go down that little slot over the wheel into the other slot. And we're going to try and get it down into the torch there. But that is going to be a little tricky. So again, we're going to loosen it and pull it out just a tad. A little more, Dave. Keep going. Give me a little room to work. There you go. Now I can kind of get my finger in here. And it's like threading a needle. Literally. Let's see. I'm going to use a pocket knife or something. This is the tricky part. Trying to get this thing in there. But once you do it, Kind of hard when the camera's on the way, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> what kind of professional am I? Yeah, exactly. I'm not. Okay, let's see here. You can let everybody see this warts and all. Oh yeah, you see how tricky it can be. That's part of the part of the process. We deal we all deal with there we go, I finally got it in there. 
Now, I don't want that to back out. I'm gonna take it and I'm just, if you watch, I'm manually kind of feeding some of this wire into the hole. I just want to uh, get it started and then we're gonna clamp and make sure everything's in its groove, clamp this back down, put the tension adjuster, whew, that thing is done. I'm glad we don't have to do that very often. And now you know why we buy those big spools so that uh, you know it takes much longer between having to load them. Okay, that's all good. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put this little cover back on the outside here. Push our torch back in, make sure it's really tight. Okay, it's fully seated and we're gonna crank down on this little knob just to tighten that up, make sure there's good contact. And we're done in here. Okay, there's two more steps uh, uh, that we need to go through, and, but we're gonna close this up for now. Let's hook up some power so we can feed the cable through the torch. Okay, we have a decision to make. Are we gonna go 110 or are we gonna go 220? Well, since we have 220 in the garage here, we're gonna use 220. The only real difference is it's gonna let us do some thicker material and stuff. Other than that, there's really nothing to it, which is one of the reasons I love this welder. We don't have to go in and switch settings for 110 to 220 or anything. We're gonna plug in a cable and it's gonna do the rest. So there's a port right on the back where all these pins go in. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna kinda of just put it up against there. It's not gonna plug in instantly, but I'm gonna rotate it a little bit until I feel it kind of drop into place. See, there we go. See how it drops in? Eventually it goes, it drops in, but it's not connected yet. So what we have to do is that inner screw, that little knob, we're gonna turn it and listen for a snap. That is now connected. So we are good to plug this in to the wall. Let's make that happen. Okay, once, once we are plugged in, we are ready to get the wire through the rest of our cable. But, I'll tell you what can make it really hard. When everything is wrapped up like this and you're trying to push the end of the wire through, it doesn't work very well. Sometimes it'll stick and stuff. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna unravel our cable as much as we can. We want this thing to be as straight as possible so that we can feed the wire through or you know very loose not no kinks okay we're going to turn the machine on and we're going to play with the settings here for a second so Dave come show them this first of all there's a power button right here we'll flip it on we hear the fan come on so we know we've done something right at least and we have a we have a power knob and we have a speed knob for the wire, okay? Now, with the speed knob, we can either push the wire through really slow, and that'll make us wait, or we can go really fast. Let me show you what the difference is. We're gonna put on one. And what I want you to watch is, I'm gonna squeeze the trigger, and you'll see the little wheels turning, okay? So I'm gonna squeeze the trigger, and you see the wheel turning. It's going pretty slow. Now, let's turn it up to five and see what happens. Okay, now it's up to five going a lot faster and we'll go all the way to 10. Too bad it doesn't go to 11. Okay, so all I'm doing is holding the trigger with the speed on 10, waiting for the material to come out the end of our little torch. So you can kind of feel it going through and there it is. It came out the other end, we're all good. So we've got that fully fed through. I'm gonna turn off the power. And the second use for our beautiful little uh, MIG pliers. You will notice there is a, a little blade that's flush on one side but recessed from the other. And there's a reason for that. When we put the nozzle up against the pliers and we cut, it leaves just the right amount of material out to start welding. If you have too much, screws things up. Too little, screws things up. That's just right. 
So we've got our work clamp set up. We have our torch ready to go. The only other thing we need now is gas. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is let's uncoil our little cable. Now, this is a very common uh, question. It, anybody who's ever had to thread connectors and pipes and things together always wonders, do I need to use Teflon tape? Well, since these are brass connectors, theoretically, we should not use tape with them. So really, we're honestly just going to plug this in. I, I disconnected our power cable just to give us a little more room here since we are trying to film this. But we are going to stick that there, thread it in by hand, and then we're just going to give it a little extra turn here, maybe about a quarter of a turn with the wrench so that it's nice and tight in there. Okay. On the other end, we are going to connect it to our regulator. Keep in mind, there's only one way. You can't do this wrong, so don't worry. There's only one piece that'll go in. We're gonna take it and we're going to, by hand again, thread it in there. Then I'm going to use another wrench to hold it while I just tighten it up a tad, just a little. I don't want to break anything, but we do want to make sure that it's tight. Oops, let me, I got to get my other wrench tight too. Okay, there we go. Do not over tighten. Yeah, don't over tighten it. It doesn't need to be. It just needs to be firm. Um, it's not like if this gas gets out, it's going to kill you or something. It's not like, it's inert. It won't burn or anything like that. It just, uh, you don't want to waste it. Okay, so that is connected. All right. All we need to do now is get this piece connected to our tank. Okay, uh, this tank, just so we can talk about it a little bit, uh, this is a small size tank. This is the one that, you, that you're gonna probably want if you're gonna deal with this welder. Uh, I got it at Home Depot. Now, not all of them have it. You need to check around and find out if your local a uh, hardware type store carries gases, but a lot of times if they carry like the Blue Rhino propane for a grill, they'll also have these cylinders for welding. So you're gonna get the 7525 mix and you're gonna bring this tiny little thing home. The first time you get one, you have to buy the whole thing and from then on out, you do it kind of as an exchange so it's cheaper. Uh, I can't remember what I paid. I think it was around 150 bucks for that. So. We can only plug this in one way. It is going to uh, go right there. We're going to spin that thing and get it threaded by hand. Let's see if we can get it going one way or another. There we go. Righty tighty. Lefty loosey. All right, so we're gonna get that in there by hand and then we will give it an extra turn a little bit with the wrench. Okay, that's in there nice and tight. So we should have we should have a sealed line between these two pieces of equipment. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna turn the gas on because the gas has to be set to the right output. We've got two gauges here. Um, the tank is pretty low, but I'm gonna open the tank slowly, make sure there's not a leak. Okay, we got pressure showing up right here. And so we're gonna open that up and we want this to be set in the 30 to 40 range. Okay, so. Uh, right now it's it's right above 30 so um, that's 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 a good range if we were doing something where we were welding at a really weird angle or there was a lot of air then we might push it up in the 40 to 50 but we can adjust this knob right here to turn to 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 make that pressure go up but around 30 to 40 is good so that's set this is set that's it, there's nothing else to do. So I hope that that didn't seem too intimidating for you guys. Um, like I said, refer to the blog, gb.tv, 
Look up Power MIG. We've got it all documented step by step there. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments here or over there. Or heck, you can tweet them at me at John Pose, and I'm happy to uh, answer them. Hey, thumbs up if this was helpful for you. Don't forget to share it with your friends, and we'll see you later on.